Hi, today I'm going to show you how to clean a whole beef tenderloin. So what I have here in front of me is a whole beef tenderloin. The first thing I'm going to use is my hands, but I also have a very sharp sort of thin knife. Uh, but I'm going to start with my hands. On the outside, there's just a membrane, and I find it's much easier just to sort of get in there. So you want to you wanna get it off. It'll never tenderize when you cook it, so you just want to make the whole thing go away and on. The outside of this tenderloin, you can see what's happening here. This is called the chain, and you'll see why once it comes off. Um, it's basically just like a chain that's attached to the side. Now, this has a lot of the membrane in it. Um, if you have the ability to grind meat at your home, if you have a meat grinder, you can certainly save this uh, and grind it and, and use it for some pretty good hamburgers. But you can see it essentially just comes right off almost all the way with your hand. And then what I'm going to do is just take the tip of my knife here, right, and just sort of help it along. And a lot of when you're carving meat, you can s sort of see there's already a blueprint in place, a map, if you will, and it just kind of tells your knife where to follow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it around so I can get my knife at it just a little bit better because the chain runs about three quarters of the way up. And then you can get in there with your knife just a little bit more because you've got a lot of meat here that you want to you want to make sure that you save. So this is what the chain looks like. And you can see it's just, it's sort of covered in membrane and, and fat. There is some meat on there. Um, if you grind it, it's going to make a great hamburger or some great ground beef. And then right here on the top is the key part. This is called silver skin. And this is, a, again, something that will not tenderize as you cook it. So that's why I like to use a thin knife. I like to get my knife just right under the silver skin. And it's just very, very tough. And then I get a nice piece to hold on to. And then I'm just going to run my knife. I'm going to hold this as tight as I possibly can and just run my knife all the way down and take that silver skin right off. And this is what I mean by a road map. Now you can see what it looks like when it's clean and you can tell what else needs to come off as far as the silver skin. And this runs sometimes three quarters of the way down. And it almost always comes off in thirds. Okay, so you can see I've got this beautiful almost clean tenderloin. That silver skin actually goes down in there just a little bit. So again, with your knife, you just want to get down and just keep sort of whittling away at it, making sure you're taking off the silver skin and not the meat. I'm just going to flip this around again so I can keep looking at this side. So I've got the same sort of situation down here where I'm going to get that. And then you also have a fair amount of fat. As I turn this over, you can see. One of the reasons people like tenderloin so much is because it's very, very lean. It's sort of up to you whether you want to keep the fat. So you can just sort of pull it off with your hands, and that will protect your meat. So you're not going to be pulling as much of the, the actual tenderloin itself off. You're just really worried about the fat itself. But what I find the easiest way to do is then turn it upside down. And if you want this fat to go away, I just take the blade of my knife and it just sort of scrapes off. And again, you're getting most of the fat because it's a completely different texture than the meat itself. I will leave a little bit of this on simply because I like a little bit of fat when I eat steak. I think that's a good part of it. And this is not silver skin. This is absolutely fat. So it will melt away and it will provide some flavor. I think sometimes people go a little bit too far um, and you wind up taking off more meat. This is a very big tenderloin. This is, this is easily five pounds, but the good news is even if you have a three pound tenderloin, the process is the same. Now there's a couple of things you can do once this is clean. At this point, you could certainly just go ahead. This is the Chateaubriand, the center, and you could roast that whole piece, and then you can cut steaks off of both of these sides and use them like filet mignon. Um, you know, if you get down to the end, you've got some beautiful steak tips. So there's varying cuts that you get out of this whole tenderloin, even though it's all tenderloin. But I think traditionally, most people are just going to roast it whole and tie it. So if that's what you're going to do, we've got some great videos and some great recipes on our website. But just to give you an idea of, of how you're going to do it, we actually sell this already trimmed and tied for your convenience. If that's something you didn't want to go through, you can certainly pick one up in the meat department that's trimmed and tied, ready to go for you. All the waste has been taken care of. It's perfectly clean. And all that happens there is you've got this thinner end and you've got this thicker end. So they're going to cook differently. You're going to put this whole thing in the oven. This is going to cook long before this cooks. So a lot of times, traditionally, what will happen is we'll just fold that tail. That's what that's called, that narrow part over. Just fold that tail over. So you have it just a little bit more uniform. And then if you had some basic butcher's twine, 
and you're just going to go down probably every, I would say, three inches or so and just make a nice knot with your butcher's twine. And what this does is this allows it to, to roast evenly. Uh, so you're going to get, if you want to cook it medium rare, you have a better chance of it being medium rare all the way through if you're going to tie it. And then I would just put another tie here, here, and you go down about every two or three inches, tie it all together, keeps it nice and uniform. I strongly suggest you try cleaning it yourself at home. But if you're not ready yet, you know you can pick one up trimmed and tied right from our meat department. Have a great holiday.